Welcome readers. Welcome to your interactive Shadow Runners Agents of Ra's Primer page. We'll start with a Q&A session. Q what are Shadow Runners? A Shadow Runners are deniable mercenaries. These deniable mercenaries are being forced to do the work of the Ra's Macro Technology Weapons Corporation. Q doesn't Agents of Ra's imply it was voluntary? A you are correct. They are being paid a lot of money, at gunpoint, ever since both they and Raz got screwed by Savant Hacker two times, who stole Raz's dog. As soon as the job is over, they are out of there. Q if they are being held at gunpoint, then why did you use the title Agents of Raz? I look up in the sky, drop bears. Q oh no, those are disproportionately powerful to the fluff. A next question. Q um, okay, who are the members of this running team, and what are their abilities? A Geppetto, a black magician, like out of the fairy tales, and also a banshee, like out of the nastier fairy tales. He can turn his body to mist, regenerate flesh wounds, and casts really nasty mind control spells. 2D is a technomancer who does internet things with his brain. Bend is an infiltrator and former T ghost, which is kind of like being a ninja with less throwing stars and silly headbands. Dervish is really really fast and can stab you to death with his hands. He's the most straightforward member of the team. Q who is this two times person? A he's the hacker who stole Ra's dog. He hides behind three satellite locator codes in a bunker somewhere. He's not happy that the runners are after him. And he's really good at counter strike. Q sweet. Did I miss anything in 7? Hey boy, did you ever? The team went to Japan and blew up their dick ass fixers bar. They also got two special pieces of loot from a Shawa's vault. And Bend almost died. 2D also did something with a maid cafe. I tried to block that part out. Q give me a good recommendation for a hybrid genre tabletop game. A I'd go with Deadlands. It's got cowboys and zombies. Q O. Oh. But we were talking about Shadoran, right? A indeed we were. Now it's story time. In other news, I wasted the time I could have spent on writing on dicking around with the significant other and doing that draw faggotry. So I'm going to be typing this out as I can. When last we left off the tail, the team had abused the bar of their corrupt as hell Japanese fixer, and was jumping on the first supersonic plane back to Seattle for a little rr. They figured Raz could put some resources into finding Dr. Herman Julian, the owner of the third and final satellite locator code that would allow the team to lock onto two times. There were two things that the team figured they had to cover before they returned to their home city. The first of these things was to look over the mystery tech that they had acquired from Shiawas. The second was to break to a little girl in Seattle that her beloved big brother was never, ever coming home. But why get concerned about the negative thing first? The team giggled and opened the boxes like a gaggle of schoolboys poking a dead dog with a stick. Box number one contained a little capsule with an interface on it. It was like one of those little Faberge eggs, but with less intricate designs and more featureless steel. Since only 2D could pop that one, he was given the capsule to work on while the rest of the team opened the other box. The second box contained a glove woven in some kind of micro light, stretchy fabric. Upon closer inspection, Geppetto determined that the glove was magical in some way, although how he couldn't quite determine. It was a bit like a spellcasting focus, but not of any tradition that Geppetto could recognize. Experimentally, he put it on, wagged it around a little, and found no immediate difference. Try casting a spell, suggested Bend, tentatively. A 4-3 suggestion later, and Bend was gleefully picking his own nose. You're an ass. Geppetto looked carefully at Bend's display of shameless nostril diving. Anything particularly different? I don't know. I've never been hit by a suggestion telling me to pick my nose before. Geppetto took the glove off, concentrated, and soon both pointer fingers were up Bend's nose. 2D stifled an immature chuckle while Bend gave Geppetto the stink eye between snorts of discomfort. No, that wasn't any different. Dervish, driving the truck, sighed and adjusted his rear view mirror. Maybe it's only a certain kind of spell suggested 2D. His AR shades ablaze as he interfaced with a little metal capsule. Hum. Geppetto pulled the glove back on, focused on a low force stun bolt, and promptly blew out the back windows of the truck. Dervish swerved for a moment as bits of glass rained all over the interior and exterior of the truck. What the flying fuck, Geppetto. Geppetto grinned. Picking himself up from the floor of the truck. Universal combat spell empowerment. Very nice. I don't think I am going to keep it, though. 2D snorted. It'll keep it for you, then. No, numbnuts. I mean that we can probably curry a lot of favor with Raz if we toss this to nice. To say nothing of the pocket change we could get out of this. 
2D nodded soberly. True, true. Fear the weapons guys. They'd pay good money for a prototype like this. Oh hey, I got it open. 2D poured metallic sand out of the capsule onto the floor of the truck. He frowned and looked into the now empty canister. Woo. Aluminum dust. What I've always wanted. There was a hissing, chittering noise as the sand began to form into a swirling composite shape, and then began eating one of the walls of the truck. Oh shit. Nanobots. What I really always wanted. Devish turned around and slammed the brakes instinctively. God damn it 2D what are you doing to my truck? Hold up hold up. I am trying to get them back in, chattered 2D, as he hammered at the button on the side of the capsule. Eventually the nanobots whirred back into the capsule, but not until after there was a perfect, AK-97 shaped hole in the side of the truck, and an AK-97 and two clips of ammo, and marked and unregistered, sitting on the inside of the truck. 2D was overcome with glee. Motherfucking gun making nanobots. Bend groaned. I get the feeling that we're not going to be doing anything good with this, are we? These interesting things discovered, the team then got to the next problem. Oh, crap, realized Dervish, we have to tell Ariana that her brother died. The team all bowed their heads for a moment, before Geppetto looked in the hacker's direction and suggested, I volunteer 2D. 2D boggled. What? She's living with your girlfriend, continued Geppetto, and that makes this your problem. Dude, you're the one who's like a suave French guy, Italian, 2D. Dude, you're the one who's like a suave gigantic faggot, and I have all the social tact of a troll at a high class dinner. You should handle this. Geppetto shook his head, calling this as team leader. You gotta break the news. 2D looked pleadingly at the rest of the team. Bent don't know her, joined the team later. Devish I am driving the truck and don't want to be distracted by a child's screams of grief. 2D grumbled. I am putting this on speakerphone, you orc bastard, just for you. The phone rang a few times, and Josie, 2D's orc Jagalo girlfriend, picked up the phone. 2D, my ninja, why you haven't come home yet? Look, baby, I, not that I don't appreciate the shit are you sending back or nothing but I got to spread the mad clown love, you know? All physical like. Got a jet your scrawny ass back here, Norm Zane? Ben gagged a little bit. Honey, can you put Ariana on? Show, show. What's this about? Uh, ah, Ariana's adorable girly voice rang over the speakerphone. Hi, Uncle Stuart. How's Tank doing? Can you put him on? 2D gulped. Um, no. Tank can't come on. Ever. He died. He died a little bit. Ariana responded, stunned. What? What do you mean he died a little bit? Well, I mean, he died, like, in little bits. In parts, I mean, constituent parts. But he died. Your brother is dead. There was a screeching noise as Ariana broke into tears. The entire team gave 2D the stinky as his girlfriend said, over the comb connection. What the fuck, Malcolm, and hung up. 2D I am not very good at talking to children. The flight back to Seattle was thoroughly awkward, with Josie informing the team that Ariana had, in fact, ran away from home, in Snahamish, so she didn't have much of anywhere to run, but it still drove home the fact that 2D was a massive heel. When the team touched down in Seattle, they each went their separate ways, with a promise to reconvene at a later date. 2D wanted to check in at home and make sure that Ariana was okay, Geppetto had a beating with Bradford Nice of Raz Seattle. Dervish wanted to stop in with Sensei and the Barons and thank him for his help on the Vegas job, and Ben checked in with Danny, the team's fixer, to get briefed on the team's history, since he'd at first just been an interim replacement. Since Ben's section was mostly just an inferump of everything that you guys have read in the last few story times, I'll start with Dervish's section. Dervish arrived at Sensei's crappy dilapidated building, surrounded by razor wire and concrete dividers, and strolled right in. Because the front door had fallen off for approximately the third time that month. He ducked under the hanging shotgun trap and instinctively sidestepped the landmine. Before he caught sight of the dead feral ghoul with no legs across the hallway and realized that the landmine had already been tripped. Sensei? Sensei, you home? As he walked through the hallway of what was once an unidentifiable consumer building, Dervish caught sight of more dead ghouls, along with a few gangers. The gangers seemed to be covered in a mishmash of ghoul bites and stab wounds. Sensei? You in here? Something happen? There was a crashing noise as a troll fell through the ceiling, his neck bent awkwardly, hanging from a length of chain. He was covered in horrible radiation burns. Carved into his chest were the words go back. Dervish took a step back, 
Oh, Kai. His synaptics went off. Danger from his left. He instinctively dropped as a sib foot flew past his face, taking out a chunk of rebar in the wall. Dervish looked up to see the blind, elderly orc, covered in blood, gunshots, and burn marks, sibra blades bristling from every joint. Kuyawa, H.A. Die, ingrate. Dervish activated his thrusters and flew to the opposite side of the room. Dude, sensei, it's me. I know that, idiot. This is a test. Now fight me you pansy bitch. Following when in Rome sensibilities, Dervish promptly tore off his shirt, extended his own knuckle and elbow blades, and engaged in a no holes barred shank fight with his master. That wasn't a typo. It wasn't no holes barred, it was no holes barred. As in they put holes in each other, and were both bleeding pretty badly by the end of it. But luckily they were both crazy cyber and bio monsters so to them it was basically the equivalent of an MMA match. Hell, at certain points Dervish even really got into the stunting aspect, running up a wall to elbow drop sensei with his arm blades. Panting and coughing up blood, the crazy old blind orc patted Dervish on the back and congratulated him. Son, I have met many murderers in my life, and truly you are one of the most efficient. You are my prized. He spat up a piece of meat. You are my prized student. My best and brightest. Anything you want, and it's yours. Feeling sentimental with blood loss, Dervish burbled. Well, I think you're pretty badass and you're kind of like a dad to me and I want to shank gangs to death with my fists when I'm bored so I think I'd like to live her instead of a shitty suburb of you. Don't mind. Sensei clapped, accidentally stabbing himself in the hand but not giving a fuck. I'll set up your bedroom. And that was how Dervish moved in with his crazy murderous Mexican surrogate dad. 2D showed up at home to find a very somber looking Josie, devoid of clown makeup or even her iconic orange and black Halloween threads. All things considered she could probably be mistaken for a respectable orc security guard or something. This was how 2D knew he fucked up. I caught Ariana, and she's in her room, said Josie, but 2D, we need to talk. 2D winced. Serious relationship talk? The Sierra resist. Josie sat 2D down at their tasteful farmhouse coffee table. 2D, you need to get out of the running biz. Tank was a lot bigger and a lot stronger than you, and the way you put it he up and died out of nowhere. Yeah, but I'm smarter and, um. Josie glared at 2D until he closed his mouth. The lil child and I don't want to see that happen to you. You done fucked up bad telling Ariana about her brother, but I still love ya, so help me, and now you're the closest thing she's got to her dad. And you can't let her lose that. 2D gulped. But baby, I, Josie blurted out, I'm pregnant. 2D came to a game with his eyes tightly closed. A message popped up in his brain. Josie come on 2D I know her awake. 2D hi, I'm 2D. I can't come to the phone right now, so leave a message. Josie stopped pretending to be unconscious 2D and open her eyes. 2D hi, I'm 2D. I can't come to the phone right now, so leave a message. Josie stop being stupid dude. 2D, how did you know? Josie her eyes are closed but my phone says her comb is online stupid. 2D curse my sexy internet brain. Curse it. 2D opened his eyes to find Josie and Ariana standing over him, having propped him up on the couch. I have reached a decision, said 2D, carefully, and that is that I'm going legit. Lem make a call. Well, hack a call. Geppetto looked disinterestedly out at the Seattle sprawl. The Ras Tower was tall, over a hundred stories, but in 2072 that wasn't a particularly fantastic feat, and the former Rinraku Arcology and current Az Technology Pyramid both loomed threateningly on the skyline. Still, Geppetto had to smile as he saw the network of stockyards and concrete blockhouses expanding from the tower's base, a veritable network of military design, research, and testing sites that was home to the largest PMC on Earth. It was a good place to make a deal. Damien Bradford Nice, a youthful human handsome in that generic, otherwise boring way that aging Republican senators seem to get, swirled his red wine over the shoulder of his imported couch. He was dressed in a fancy Italian suit, with the tiny little American flag pin marrying it over his breast, like a little patriotic zit. I'd offer you some of the red, but my sources tell me you're drinking a different kind of red these days. And what brings you to my, he gestured to his lavish penthouse apartment, humble abode, Geppetto hefted a small briefcase. Business. Shiwes weapons technology. Nice's eyes lit up. My birthday was in two months, you know. Geppetto cracked the briefcase, revealing the glove. Nice looked at it quizzically. We're not in the market for 20 sen pop stars, Geppetto. 
Geppetto rolled his red eyes. Ha, ha. Notice how appreciative I am being of your pop culture references and jokes. So what is it, Geppetto? Universal combat spell focus. Uses some kind of mana weave. I don't know the tech behind it. Nice smiled. Oh. Problem with that sort of thing is that it's hard to reverse engineer. We'd have to either spend a lot of time differentiating it from the Shireworths product, or cut our losses and basically admit we stole it. I can offer you 40,000. Geppetto sighed and began to close the box again. Please. This is an experimental prototype. My boys will need at least 80. Bradford put his hand on the briefcase. 60. 15 for each of you. That's my final offer. Geppetto was reaching his hand forward to shake, when a little bomb-headed icon popped up in AR space between the two. 2D. Nice grimaced. To what do I owe the pleasure? Drop it to 45. But I want a favor. Nice leaned forward and pent his fingers together, looking intently toward the little icon. Go on. I'm dropping my share of this money, and my share of the Raz job. 35k in total. But I want in. Nice drawled. Define in. Into Raz. Into the family. I want to be an obnoxious conservative pundit flag wearing high paid Mathurfica. Nice popped a small smile. Oh. And aside from the money, what exactly is incentivizing me to do this? You're not exactly the shining model of a true blue American hero. From what I gather we could hire your street samurai for that. I'm the dirtiest fucking black hat hacker this side of Seattle. I don't mean shit in the real world, but online I'm a Chaos Engine member, a technomancer, a master of programming and mechanics. And I have rep you put a white hat on me, not only am I going to be better than any shitty tenure career spiders you have in this entire compound, but people are going to know not to mess with your systems. I broke into your traffic registry last month without breaking a sweat. Nice chortled before taking a swig of his wine, abandoning the pretense of culture. So you want to be a spider, do you? Mathefica, I want to be head spider. Geppetto winced as Nice broke into a full belly laugh, spilling the remainder of his wine. Oh, the balls on you. The brass balls on this little nerd you've got, Geppetto. 2D's icon stood fast. Tell you what, 2D, if you're as good as you say, you'll make good on the mission you're on right now. I'm not going to help you. Two times is entirely on your team. But you make it, and you have the position of head spider at the Raz compound. Raz Seattle will be your personal playground. But, this comes with caveats. One, is that Chaos Engine doesn't touch us. They do, and you will be held responsible. The second, is that you'll become a contracted lifer. You'll live, eat, sleep, all in building. Your family will go to Raz schools, buy Raz clothes, and watch Raz TV. Your talents belong to us forever after the two times job. Understood? 2D's little icon held forward its tiny hand. Understood. There was an awkward moment as Nice's hand passed repeatedly through 2D's icon, and then he just pantomimed shaking a hand. I'll inform human resources that none of the perspectives are getting the security head position. And you, Geppetto, I'll have the money sent to you. Tell your hacker he has a lot of nerve for me. Dude, I'm right here. It was for emphasis. Get out of my cum link, 2D. In Snahamish. 2D told Josie the news, resulting in a bout of incredibly rough impromptu clown sex. The team reconvened two days later at the orders of Mr. Johnson, standing in front of a prop aircraft at the Raz airstrip. Gentlemen. Good to see you all up bright and early in the morning. You've been given access to Raz mechanical and armory facilities until 1800 hours, and then we're sending you off. Geppetto pulled his fedora down over his eyes, groaning at the sunlight. Where exactly are we going? Johnson smiled, a humorless, icy expression. Doctor, Herman Julien was as a talented medical mage. Boys. That means that he was sent to a place where he could allay great human suffering. Get ready for a foray into Lagos. 2D groaned. Or, oh, shit. That's worse than Japan. Ben scoffed. Yes. That is a lot worse than Japan. For the uninitiated, Lagos is basically the Shadoran equivalent of a very real contemporary nation, by which I mean the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but with magic, monsters, and evil spirits. So, yes, a lot worse than Japan. 2D called home. Honey, tell Ariana and Trigger that I'm not coming back alive. If you can't find Trigger, he is probably in the fridge node at this time of morning. He's a little hazy on ephemeral concepts like death, so... Devish slapped 2D upside the head. Stop being such a pansy. I'm not scared of Lagos. 
You're 6 foot 5 and made of steel. Still. The team split and binged on Omri purchases. 2D modded his Stefan for jungle travel with gigantic off-road tires and wobbly suspension, and bought two Steel Lynx bots that quickly became known as the War Crime Bots. Tack cloaked, environmentally modified to operate in jungle locales, equipped with fuzzy logic decision-making adaptability programs and gigantic honking machine guns. These would be his escorts, and he would not settle for anything less. Geppetto picked up an illusion focus. Black magic foci are hard to come by what with the whole being a legal thing. But Raz was able to pillage a night errand evidence bin on a triple homicide. Ben got more wonderful spy toys and a sexy monofilament knife. And Dervish. Dervish bought heavy mill spec power armor. Dervish had saved up a lot of money, you see. Pick and link very relevant. Done up in Raz colors, Dervish couldn't resist quipping. I am an American hero. Dervish's legs made a gashunk. Gashunk. Gashunk noise and sent light spiderweb cracks up the pavement as he jogged around in the yard testing out the suit. For shits and giggles, he sprinted through the live fire range, watching the bullets ping off of him. Dude, 2D said, in disbelief, over the comm system in his red, white, and blue helmet. Subtlety. We have been for that, responded Irvish, before vaulting the training yard climbing wall in a single bound, leaving craters in the pavement on either side. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Geppetto adjusted his tire looked at his watch, and glanced from his gigantic America-themed street samurai to his distraught hacker to his distraught hacker's half-invisible murder bits, to wherever it was that he'd last seen Ben before Ben disappeared entirely. Gentlemen, we do have a schedule to keep. He found an empty seat in the Osprey and turned around to sit, but heard a cough from behind him. Sorry. Sitting here. God damn it, Ben. This tax suit upgrade rocks. Now would be the time to look up the Far Cry 2 Ost on YouTube. It's basically all I played for the ambient session music in this arc. The time was early the next morning when the Osprey touched down at the Peace Corps camp in the jungles of Lagos. Dervish stomped off first, his power armor whirring into motion as he surveyed the area around the camp, scanning for hostiles. Show off, grumble 2D, as he slouched into the compound, flanked by the two jungle camo to Chikamus of Doom. He tapped the side of his head absently, clearing pop-ups and Nigerian email scams from his head. His van sat in the middle of the compound, having been airlifted in an hour prior. Geppetto followed with all the dignity he could muster, brushing condensation off his suit jacket. Bend, goggles and face mask on, followed him from behind, keeping up the rear. Mr. Johnson approached, flanked by a nervous looking Peace Corps doctor, a young Asian woman in a jumpsuit. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Myra Chu. She'll give you the brief on Dr. Jillian. Chu hastily shook hands with Geppetto. Dr. Julian has been kidnapped by Fanti Pirates. We need you to rescue him. 2D groaned. Of course it wouldn't have been this easy. The Fanti are experts at evading authorities and surveillance. You'd have to get in contact with them through the local warlords. They do business with most all of them. Please, we know you have business with Dr. Julian, but we need him back. The camp's falling apart without his magic and we can't meet any of our quotas. Geppetto took the woman's hand in his own. I swear to you, we will rescue this poor, innocent man. You have my word. Ben nodded approvingly. Geppetto continued. Dervish, you're basically impervious. Scout out the road down to the Lagos safe zone. I don't want any nasty surprises on the way down there. Clapping his helmet faceplate shut, Dervish saluted, and made his way towards one of the waiting taxis outside the camp. An extremely sketchy looking cab driver waved to Dervish. American. That is a nice suit of armor you have there, and a nice gun, as well. For this I will take you into town for half price. It was a blatantly obvious trap. Deal, said Dervish, grinning behind his helmet. Dervish just remained sitting in the car as the driver veered off the road about halfway to the town of Lagos the namesake of the region, itself a lawless frontier of Nigeria, bailed out, and yelled, now. A couple of bullets hit Dervish's head. They didn't do anything. Dervish waited until the small arms fire quieted down to step out of the taxi, whereupon his sensors detected eight gunmen, having seemingly emptied their weapons, almost entirely pistols, into the cab. Admittedly, in this case emptied does not imply a full clip, since each of them had maybe three bullets apiece. Dervish made a careful note of marking each of them on his tax soft, and then slammed his fists together, creating sparks. I'm not even gonna waste my blades on you idiots. Using just his thrusters souped up with additional thrusters from the armor, his gauntleted fists, 
and his very, very heavy legs, Dervish launched himself directly at the first assailant. Many screams, snapping noises, and bodies flying dozens of feet into the air with things twisted in directions they weren't supposed to go later, and Dervish was advancing on the last fleeing gunman, chuckling loudly through his face mask speakers. Dervish kept advancing casually forward, even as a small convoy of Hotspur's Jeeps Hummers approached from further down the road. He had just managed to grab the last, scrambling man by the neck and was contemplating seeing if he could snap it one-handed when a warning rocket flew by his head, detonating somewhere in the tree line. Dervish announced over the speakers in his armor, You have my attention. A beret wearing African man with a series of wicked scars some of which looked to be self-inflicted stood up in the first Hotspur. He announced, over a loudspeaker, I am General Sadami of the Lord's Army of Restoration. That man is one of my recruits. They failed their initiation. You will put him down. I dunno. What can you give me? Your life. A gunner loaded another RPG. I dunno. I was in the mood to make a deal. There was a pause. Go on. We need to meet with the head of the Fanti Pirates. And what is it you can offer us? American dog? Dervish grinned. Guns. Hundreds of them. 2D spotted Dervish while he was driving down to Lagos. Dervish was sitting on an overturned pickup truck, playing Matrix games in his AR. 2D unlocked his rigger cocoon and looked out the window. Dervish, what's the deal? Funny you should use that phrase. We gotta find a fixer in town. Someone who can tell us where there's a whole shitton of scrap metal. Maybe a frag tank or something. 2D glanced at his nanobot capsule. You didn't? Damn right I did. General Sadami of the whatever fucking revolutionary militia or something says he'll give us the Fanti Pirates in exchange for 100 AKs. Geppetto smiled. That's good news, assuming he doesn't try to screw us. Stand up, we'll start with the pickup truck you're sitting on. Or what's left of it. 20 minutes later and 12 AKs richer, the team continued the journey into town. Lagos rose over the tree line, a metropolis of squalor. Once a small African town, it boomed over time to meet the needs of the rising mercenary population and the economy of blood they perpetuated. Shipping containers stacked haphazardly into makeshift towers, adorned with ladders and wooden framing. The team passed by not one, but three assaults in progress in the streets, usually by the mercenaries nominally in charge of keeping the peace on the hapless civilians and refugees. As the van rolled under a crashed airplane remade into a squatter refuge, a cheering teenager jumped onto the roof and rode for a few meters, before taking an awful spill off. No one moved to help him, but a gang of urchins did emerge from the nearest shanty town, looking eager to rob him blind. Okay, Bend was right, 2D acknowledged. This is, like, why a worse than Japan. I'm glad we agree, sighed Bend, putting out a few feelers onto the ghetto, spotty as fuck local matrix. 2D located an old colonial plantation house turned fixer bar a few miles in. Alright, gents, I think we have a hit. With a rev of the engine and a splatter of mud and loose rocks, they made for the center of town. Kwame Mbora did not expect the runners to enter his bar. Well, he expected runners to enter his bar in general, but the runners he was used to were hard-nosed South African ex-soldiers, or Congolese psychopaths or the occasional professional type from a colonial power, on the run from someone or something. What he didn't expect were a gigantic America-themed mecher, a thin albino in a black suit, and another elf in tactical gear. Okay, the last one he could've guessed. 2D milled around in the van. Make it quick, guys. I don't want to have to sick the color drones on these idiots outside who look like they're thinking of jacking me. Kwame stood. He had learned that all business was good business in Lagos, even weird business. Especially weird business. What is it that you need, my good sir he asked, experimentally, in English. Geppetto responded, slotting a 2D brand Igbo Lingusoft. Scrap metal. Tons of it. All in one place if you can manage. Oh, and this was weird business. I can get you that, said Kwame, grinning and showing off gold fillings. I can get you that indeed. I just want one thing in return. The African pointed at Dervish. The big one. I want him for my bar. Security, see, only as long as it takes you to get that scrap metal, no big deal. Geppetto eyed the Nigerian fixer. So you know where we can find this metal? Yes. Do you agree to my price? Geppetto patted Dervish on the shoulder. I think we can handle being apart for a little while. Out in the car, 2D glared at the half dozen sketchy looking African men now pressed up against his windows, trying to get a peek inside through the polarized glass. 
he announced over speakers, Enigbo. If you do not get away from my van I swear to god I will fill you with so many holes you will resemble this shitty brown moon landscape you call a country. Quav looked at Geppetto. Your driver is a bit of a loose cannon. Tell him that I am putting on your comlink the coordinates to a broken tank. As technology make, an import of a warlord long dead, it should provide you all the metal you need. Geppetto nodded. Thank you, Kwame. We will be back for our samurai soon. As Geppetto and Bend returned to the van, Kwame turned to Dervish and asked, with a grin, How good are you at drinking? Drinking? Drinking. I'm pretty goddamn good at drinking. Prove it. Kwame handed Dervish a cup full of liquid. It's black. But it's good shit. It's black. Are you racist, American? Booze isn't supposed to be black. Drink it, American pussy. I don't want to. Are you a chicken? Kwame made absurd clucking noises. Fine, I'll drink your shitty Nigeria war booze or whatever. But this better not do anything stupid. Devish downed the drink. He woke up in an underground cell, naked but for his pants. God damn it. Wakey wakey, American. Kwame jingled keys from the other side of the cell door. That was a really stupid trick. And yet, you fell for it. What am I doing here? You don't work for anyone who wants me dead, otherwise I would be. Dead Kwame laughed. No, I don't want you dead. He opened the cell, revealing two trolls behind him with very large guns. I want you to compete in my secret underground pit fighting ring. Devish gawked. You're shitting me. I, what? American expression. You're yanking my chain. Well, yes, figuratively, but we have not chained you. Pulling my leg? Kwame looked at Dervish, confused, and slowly shook his head. You're kidding. Kwame coughed and picked up his villain monologue again. No, I most certainly am not. You will be the star of the show, a street fighter from America, land of the free, and you will lose in the second match to a homegrown African champion before engaging in a series of storyline grudge matches that the crowd will love. You could have just asked me. Yes, but this way I do not have to pay you. Dervish nodded, rubbing his sore muscles. True, true. So when's the first fight? Kwame was again at a loss for words. You're not mad? I little pissed, maybe. That booze was really shitty. Who am I fighting? You'll need a name first. Got a name, said Dervish, reaching into his pocket and unfurling a certain Japanese made American flag, before wrapping it around his face. It's America-san. As Kwame walked Dervish down an underground hall towards the roar of an arena, Dervish asked, So there's no way I could negotiate for money? Negotiating Kwame laughed and nodded to the trolls. Gentlemen, would you please have this white devil taken out back, beaten and sodomized? Whoa. Point taken. No need to go all prison shower on me just yet. Your first fight will be against General Angola. He's not actually a general. It's his first fight, too. We need you to lose. Dervish peeked out into the arena, at a cybered up black man half his size and about a third his body muscle. Imposing, but not anything close to Dervish. You're kidding. Nope, you have to lose. If it helps, we're not paying him anything, either. You owe me for this, Kwame. Beaten and sodomized. You owe me nothing for this, Kwame. Dervish advanced into the ring, to the jeers of the crowd. Alright, let's get this over with. Dervish leapt into the ring and let the general go on the attack, blocking his punches effortlessly. He used the opportunity to make conversation with the other pit fighter. So they roped you into this, too? A crooked street doc sold me out. That sucks. Hey, wanna get a little revenge? Not if it gets me killed. Move your head right for a moment. Dervish jabbed at the Angola's face, doing a lot less damage than it looked and sounded like he was. Sorry about that. No, it won't get you killed. I need you to hit me with an uppercut, then pick me up and throw me at Kwame up in the stands. Think you can handle that? Just got muscle toner in last month. Dervish bit his own tongue, and when Angola punched him under the jaw, he spat the resultant blood with a gory thwa. The crowd roared, as Angola picked Dervish up and pitched him into the crowd. Dervish's skimmers briefly activated to right his course into a flying accidental head but that blasted Kwame clean through the back of his chair, wheezing and holding his gut. Kwame growled. God damn it, American. Sorry boss, said Dervish, kipping back up, this guy's a real fighter. Before Kwame could protest again, Dervish dove back into the ring, flooring Angola with an extremely broadcasted clothesline maneuver. Miles away, 2D pulled up to the side of the frag tank, exactly where Kwame said it would be. It was surrounded on all sides by hills and underbrush, 
I'll deploy the drones to scout. One of you two guys. The nanobots are active. Just pour them on the tank and keep exposed metal away. Bend grabbed the canister. Alright. I've got this one. Geppetto, you wanna pop a few spirits? I'm not liking these hills. Roger. Geppetto's eyes gleamed as he began a summoning ritual. Okay. Let's make this quick. Get in. Get. Ben slid open the side door of the van, and there was a loud punk from a nearby hilltop. Marauulu it. Ben threw himself to the ground as a flying anti-personnel grenade air busted just next to the van, filling Geppetto with shrapnel and blowing out the windows. The van rocked wildly, nearly tipping over. Geppetto slumped to the floor, his healing factor slowly kicking in, as Ben rolled over in the mud, fumbling for his sidearm. On that note, I need to go to dinner with the girlfriend. Don't worry, I'll pick up this cliffhanger later tonight. The explosion was immediately followed up by a deafening roar of automatic gunfire, the distinctive whir and clatter of high-velocity assault rifles. Two of the van's large off-road tires popped outright, dropping the front of the vehicle with a clank. Ben buried himself deeper into the mud as bullets skimmed by him, grazing him by fractions of inches. As it turned out, this saved him when a flamethrower spell went off above him, nearly missing setting Porn Geppetto on fire and washing over the van. As 2D's drones circled around the hill to return fire, the enemy runners hopped into their own off-road vehicle, a hot spur, and floored it. The attack had been brief and devastating. Under cover of his drone's gunfire, 2D made for the back of the van to apply first aid to Geppetto. Luckily for him, Geppetto's own healing had pushed most of the shrapnel out, and so the resultant procedure was mostly a patch-up and stimpack job. Geppetto glanced up in the sky above the van and spotted a Watcher Spirit. Realizing he had to act quickly, he summoned up his Fire Spirit and sent it after the van, with instructions of Geek the Major. Failing that, cause as much damage as possible. The Fire Spirit flew off. A few moments later, its sympathic link with Geppetto registered extreme, murderous satisfaction, and then silence as it popped. Okay, rasped Geppetto. I did some damage. What the fuck was that? I'd recognize that sort of hit anywhere. Coughed Bend, picking himself up from the mud. Those guys were like us. Shadowrunners. It's in the timing. 2D coughed. Brilliant. Someone hired runners to come after us. Who would know oh balls? Geppetto groaned. Picking bits of broken glass out of his suit. Two times. He knows we're here. How did they hit us this early, though? 2D thought back to when the sketchy thug types were poking around the van. Oh, fuck. Bend, Geppetto, search the outside of the van for trackers, maybe a satellite uplink. I'm going to check the van for viruses. 2D dove the van's node to find a torn up, viral morass, obstructing the van's startup command and picking apart necessary functions. Fuck me. Bend produced a miniaturized, tack cloaked satlink. Right here. One of them bored a hole in the side of the van. He's been hacking us the whole time. He's been relaying our position to a running team. But now we can't move. We're sitting ducks. Geppetto reached into the gear in the back of the van, looking for body armor. How long is it gonna take to get us moving again? 2D. I'm gonna have to do a hard reset. Then I'm going to have to purge the virus manually. English. It's like digital fucking trench warfare. It's gonna take hours. Geppetto spat angrily. Fuck. Okay, bend. We're going on shifts. The drones are keeping a perimeter. Get ultrasound up. Keep connected. 2D. Send your flispy up to keep long range watch. As 2D activated his sprites and agents in cleanup mode, sweeping the van systems for viral code and taking bites out of it which of course promptly regenerated. Making the whole thing an arduous process, he leaned back to ask Geppetto. Do we actually know where Dervish is right now? Geppetto paused for a moment. Fuck. Back door on his eyes. 2D put a hand to his head and saw. A brutal but fake cage fight against Dervish and a lanky, black elf. Dervish was really wailing on the elf, but 2D could see that it wasn't nearly as much damage as the elf was pretending to take. America San defeats the leading contender shouted Kwame. He's cage fighting, said 2D, blankly. Is his comb on? Number. Geppetto sat down to think. 2D paused, motioned for Ben to come inside, and said, gather round, kids. I think I have an idea. 2D explained his plan. Since Dervish is a flying, it'll take them a little while to find him. And, assuming I'm not back during on his eyes at the time, they won't see a wireless signal. He'll appear to have gone completely underground. Geppetto made a circular motion with his hand. 
And this means, it's going to look like we don't know where he is. Especially since he obviously didn't sign up for this. So they're going to try to hit him, since he is an easy target. Ben smiled. Ah. Uh -huh. So we use Dervish as bait, surround the arena, and then geek the runners when they try to geek Dervish. Geppetto looked at Ben. I thought you were a pacifist. Technically, this is self-defense. Or, I guess, Dervish defense. 2D nodded. That's the idea. Lem go over the footage from my drones. See if we can't get a face on one of our mystery runners. Ben frowned. Is Dervish gonna like being used as bait like this, without knowing it? 2D shrugged. Well, he'll live, probably. Dude's made of steel. Geppetto nodded. Still, we're going to have to move our asses quick, given that the car is still supposedly hours away from movement. I'll stick some watcher spirits out there, but anything more might ruin the ambush. Your job, 2D, is to get us mobile as soon as possible. Ben and I can replace the front tires with spares if you need. 2D bowed his head to drop into VR. Sounds good. If you think you can do that safely, do. Don't bother with the nanobots. All priority is on these mercs right now. With 2D personally helping his sprites and agents, the virus was cleared up fairly quickly. It only took about 30 minutes. Of course, knowing two times, 2D promptly delved the system and found another virus, wedged deeper in. This one took another 30 minutes to purge, and then he spent another 30 reconstructing the vanned systems. Still, he technically remained short of the hour's mark. Okay, we're Moby. 2D winced as the feed from his flispy was cut off and its burnt little husk spiraled off into the jungle. Fuck it, we need to move. The team piled into the van and made for Lagos escorted by the killer drones, doing everything they could to lose any tails. It was on the way back that 2D's search program got back to him. Hey, we got a facial match on one of these guys. One of the gunmen was a runner active on the German and Russian fixer networks, an orcish former French foreign legionnaire who went by. Jean Ducat, groaned Geppetto. John Doe. If we hit this guy, it's gonna have to be by facial recognition. And he's not especially distinctive. He is just a generic white orc street Sammy. Dervish is a generic white orc street Sammy, offered Bend. 2D countered. I'd lay off on generic. He wears an American flag on his head. True. Rather than pulling up to the fixer bar or its arena basement, the team parked in one of the ubiquitous shipping containers a few blocks away. Geppetto cast an invisibility spell. Ben activated his cloak. The murder bits also cloaked, and the two elves and two drones made for the building. Weaving through the streets and trying to minimize sight range. Op is live. 2D said, over the team's comms. Op is live. I'll be running over watch, Roberts and gentlemen. Upon entering the underground arena, Ben Spider crawled up the wall and onto the ceiling, pivoting torso down to get a clear view of the entirety of the stands. Geppetto merged into the crowd, trying to stay hidden and not dropping his invisibility, while the murder drones moved to flank the exit. Geppetto and Ben swiftly identified two obvious targets. On the west side of the room was the orc they died eat earlier, Jean Ducat. On the north side was a Russian looking man that Geppetto quickly identified as an Eastern Orthodox Christian theurge, a magician. Bent crawled towards the magician as dervish. Sorry, America San was released into the arena below, to allow the Limber Elf his revenge grudge match extreme. Dervish's synaptics and a little bit of luck kicked in just in time and he dropped to the floor as a shot barely missed his head, flying into the opposite wall. 2D quickly scanned the room through Ben's ultrasound sensors and recognized the gunman. Attack cloaked infiltrator wielding a compact, high caliber assault rifle. The mage was also confirmed for an enemy when he gestured towards Dervish, and Dervish melted into some kind of a mobile flesh jelly, his sibiris floating awkwardly alongside his sib feet, pants, and American flag in a greenish dude pool. Bend. Get the infiltrator. Geppetto, geek the mage and see if you can undo whatever he just did to Dervish. Take out Dukud next. Roger. Roger. As Geppetto summoned up a guardian spirit, a black knight that galloped into the center of the arena on a flaming steed, the crowd began to scream with the realization that this was probably not part of the show. Bent crawling steadily along the ceiling and Geppetto in the stands watched in horror as the rival infiltrator reached for his belt, produced a grenade, and tossed it into the ring causing it to land directly in the aforementioned Duda pool. Luckily for Dervish, the rival fighter wasn't particularly interested in dying horribly, so he picked up the grenade and hucked it into the stands. 
there was a brief gaseous PFFFT before it exploded, coating about a quarter of the screaming crowd in white phosphorus and setting an entire corner of the room ablaze. Duke had tucked and rolled out of the blaze, cursing in French, while his Christian compatriot hurled stun bolts at the spirit in the ring to no avail. With a cry of blood and thunder the Black Knight charged at the Christian Theurge with its wicked looking bastard sword drawn. As the Theurge stumbled for an exit, it lopped his head off in one fell blow, laughing madly. The crowd by this point was in utter chaos and also partially on fire. Geppetto was knocked flat by screaming patrons piling out the exits including Kwame, who was booking it for his life. While Kwame's trolls pulled iron only to be put down at extreme close range by Dukud's Havar. Ben dropped from the ceiling and carved a deep gash down the infiltrator's back, and the infiltrator stumbled forward with a yelp of pain and surprise. Dervish resolidified with the death of the Theurge, and sat up to find the arena on fire. Spotting a gunman killing the house guard Dervish had not been briefed on Dukud. He rocketed up to the stands, deployed his elbow blades, and took the fight to the gun Sammy. As 2D's murder drones piled into the arena, bowling over fleeing civilians, Bent pulled his sidearm and engaged in a close-range fi fight with the wounded infiltrator. With both parties scoring a few glancing shots on each other, ignoring silly things like crowds of people in the way, 2D ordered the drones to put down the enemy infiltrator, which they did, with gusto. 3 seconds and well over 30 bullets later, the infiltrator was a pair of disembodied legs and a chunky stain on the wall. All the chaos, death, fire, and destruction, meanwhile, played perfect host to the free nuclear spirit that emerged from the ring in a burst of white light, horribly flash burning though still stupid enough to be in the first few rows. Appearing as a humanoid figure composed of brilliant, sickly light, it began running its long fingers along the sides of the ring, slicing out swaths of carpentry and masonry and nuclear fire. Um, that wasn't part of the plan, observed 2D. The crowd simply redoubled their attempts to flee, crawling up, over, and around 2D's drones. I think this is about time that we bailed on this op. Bend, latch onto one of the drones. I, wait, I have a sneaking suspicion. Back in his shipping container, 2D carefully deployed his two-man hack from Half-Life 2 style Dragonfly mini drones around the front of the shipping container, and then had them circle around to the back of the van. Sure enough, there was another street samurai, a less experienced looking thug with a reinforced armor jacket and a heavy pistol, advancing on the van. 2D took the opportunity to direct the drones at his ankles. Six seconds of horrible, horrible screaming later, the back of the van was coated in blood, and the Sammy was clutching the stumps where his feet used to be, wailing in pain. The van's bumper collided with his head as 2D pulled out of the shipping container. Nice try Mithurfikas. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Back inside the arena, Dervish was suffering from a critical dosage of bullets, and Dukud was staggering from a few well-placed shanks. Dukud had been schooled in a variant of Marine Corps martial arts, using his rifle as a Malayan projectile weapon, and had been really going to town on Dervish. Whereas Dervish had utilized his own Sanga wire zero training, found an opportunity to get under Dukud's gun and delivered a few good punches right into his side. However, enough was enough, and a nuke spirit certainly counted as enough Dervish activated his thrusters, announced, you're fucked, dude, and promptly boosted towards the exit, fleeing upwards to the surface. This left just Geppetto, Dukud, the nuclear spirit, and a few writhing, burning bodies. Acting on a flight of whimsy, Geppetto elected to remind his teammates and whoever was running Overwatch for the enemy running team just why black magicians have such a nasty reputation. Jean Dukud knew when a mission was hosed, and this mission was long hosed. The Theurge and the Ninja were all kinds of dead, and they'd lost the rigor earlier when the fire spirit torched him, now was the time to run. Picking up his assault rifle, he beat feet. Or, rather, he would have, if he wasn't hovering with no traction a few feet above the ground. Duke had scanned the crowd until he found the black mage, standing there in his suit and pointing at him, maintaining the spell. He tried to aim, to pull the trigger, but he was too disoriented, and it was like there was something in his mind keeping him from shooting. He noticed he was floating, slowly, at a rate of inches, towards the center of the ring, and the mage was smiling. Glancing briefly towards the nuke spirit, he felt his eyeballs begin to tingle, and then something in his head made him look, and he screamed, and he screamed, and he screamed, as he died by inches as he was slowly moved closer and closer to the spirit, until there was nothing left but his constituent atoms, and the shadow of a man in inconceivable, incredible pain, etched forever into the opposite wall.
Geppetto made eye contact with the spirit with his shades on, of course, and, despite himself, he smiled. He could almost feel the spirit smiling back. It had been a truly exquisite death, and it wasn't often he met anyone or anything else capable of appreciating that. And that was basically the darkest scene in the campaign. Yes. Geppetto felt a burning sensation in his head, as a single, thin mark appeared over it. A sign of the nuclear spirit's pleasure? He didn't particularly know, but didn't care to find out. Tipping his hat, he exited the room and ran up the exit to see the van flanked by the Murderbots, with the side door open and Bend and Dervish, fully geared up and armored, inside. Let's go make some guns, said Geppetto, with a sadistic grin. They pulled out of the sight of the frag tank, and 2D put the nanobots to work. The team did a much better job of setting up a proper perimeter and firing lines, although it was for naught nothing was coming their way. 2D tapped on the interface of the van, waiting as the tank slowly melted into guns. He noticed something in VR space, and locked onto it. This is weird. Something's interfacing with the van, but it's not an icon. Some kind of signal. 2D followed the signal back, to something moving. Something moving fast in the skies over Lagos. Doing a scan, he identified. Predator missile. 2D choked a little. Predator missile. Run for the tank. Bend, Dervish, and Geppetto boggled, before sprinting for the partially destroyed tank. 2D grabbed onto one of his lynxes before the murder but split, driving off into the jungle at full speed. But would it be enough? The entire team looked upwards in terror as the missile finally came into view, a gleam in the sky getting closer, faster, the sound of its roaring jet finally hitting their ears, and as it descended, Geppetto reached into his pockets. What is it yelled Bend. Geppetto screamed something, but Bend couldn't hear it. What? The spaghetti screamed Geppetto, it fell out of my pockets. Have you tried walking the dinosaur? And then the missile hit and everyone died. It's the 2nd of April now. It was for approximately 8 more minutes, and I realized that I hadn't sprung this on you guys yet, and produced his summoning foci, calling up his guardian spirit as quickly as he could, to add just one more shield to the mix, in case that would make a difference. The entire team hunkered down as the missile hit, rocking the tank and turning the Stefan into scrap, rolling off his steel links, 2D wept openly at the loss of such a reliable machine. God damn you, two times. Why do you have to go and do that? Over his comb, Dervish announced. Uh, we're all still alive, 2D. I wasn't talking about you. Have some heart man. Wait a minute. This isn't as bad as I thought it was. The team emerged from the tank as it fell apart into over a hundred AKs. Dervish took off his helmet and responded. I thought that you were just crying in tragic grief over the loss of your beloved van. I was. But then I remembered that there's another car. Geppetto blinked. Another car? Bend asked, incredulously. Where? I'll be right back, mounting his links again like a horse. 2D took off over one of the hills. Dervish turned to Geppetto and Bend. Do either of you dandelion eaters have any idea what he's talking about? Both elves shrugged. About 20 minutes later, 2D drove back over the hill in a scorched tartar hotspur, with the driver's seat fried to a crisp and a torched skeleton tossed haphazardly into the shotgun seat. Idiots lost their rigor so they couldn't fix it. It was a routine replacement anyway. Geppetto took off his hat. I fucking love you right now. 2D. Loading the AKs into literal stacks in the back of the hot spur, the team took what they could from the wreckage of the van. Not much, considering most of the team's gear was on their persons. But the rigor cocoon, being effectively a black box for a dude, was not only salvageable but in fairly good shape. Being driven by their familiar black bubble thing again, the team piled into the utility vehicle for the trip back to General Sadami. At Sadami's camp, the team kept their guard as teams of children unloaded the AKs. The general sat in a lawn chair, smoking a cigar and polishing a gold-plated assault rifle. Geppetto stepped out of the hotspur to approach him. 100 AKs and clips, as ordered. You have to tell us where the Fanti and the region are based, now. Sadami nodded amicably, although he didn't resist a chance to blow a smoke ring in Geppetto's face. Geppetto didn't blink. The Fanti are based on an old defunct oil rig off the coast of Asamando, the nation of walking death. North from the capital, I'll give you the coordinates. I hope you have bite-proof clothes, my friends. Geppetto smiled. We have our insurance. 
Thank you for your help, General. As the team drove out of the compound, they heard Sadami beginning a speech over his megaphone about exterminating the impure of Lagos and bringing punishment upon their women. Ben shouldn't we be worried about this? Or at the very least guilty? Geppetto and 2 Dinawa. Dervish remained silent, preferring not to comment. Despite the very threatening nature of the title nation of walking death, Asamando was actually probably the most civilized nation in Africa. It had paved streets, multi-story buildings with decent engineering, and even working vehicles and a business-based economy that took Nguyen. It just so happened that the entire nation was populated by flesh-eating zombies, and the entire food industry of the nation was based around importing corpses from conflict zones like Lagos. Aha, said 2D. And you take a left on Gum Drive, directed John, 2D's ghoul doctor buddy, Ayeb. And then another left on second, you're sure that they don't have the grid link up yet? I'm sure, John. It's like a third world nation out here. That's not funny, 2D. It was kind of funny, maybe a little. Keep straight for 3 or 4 blocks and you should hit the docks. You mention pirates if you're dealing with the fanti lookout for Lubnana Kwesi. He's their leader, fancies himself the Jackal King. That's a retarded name, 2D complained. Don't tell him that, 2D. Alright, you at the docks? Yep. Ask for Goro. He's the best boatman I know out in that neck of the woods. He should see you through. Cool. Thanks, John. Anything for a friend out in my home country. The team stepped out of the jeep adorned in protective gear. Dervish wore his armor, 2D and Bend wore thick clothes and respirators, and Geppetto was already infected and didn't give a fuck. They found Goro the boatman in his speedboat, reading a print girly magazine. Although mostly bald, Goro wasn't particularly rotten, with only a little decomposition around his cheeks. Goro? You're looking at him, American. How much to get out to the Fanti oil rig? That's a dangerous route. Um. I'm going to need at least 150 Nguyen. Maybe 200. Geppetto stifled a chuckle mostly successfully. That's, that's pretty steep. I suppose we'll have to go by that price. 2D scroll text across everyone's feeds that read I love third world economies. Goro the boatman pulled on a pair of goggles and stepped to the front of his speedboat. By all means, gentlemen. Get in, get in. Piling into the back of the speedboat, the team set out to find the Fanti pirates and save Dr. Herman Jillian. And that's where I'm going to call it for tonight, since I need to wake up in 6 hours. Next time gunfire, explosions, pimp suits, wedding bells, and the end of the two times arc. Ah, oh, that's good. Now, I fucking love the Shadowgun series. Like, seriously. Like, to me, this is like the old guardsman party. But in the Shadowgun universe, it's fucking great. I love this shit. And, like, you know, I really enjoy, like, you know, being able to see all the different cultures and countries in the Shadowgun universe. How it's different from us. Like, you know, I fucking, I don't know. See, well building that shit just makes me fucking hard. Like, seriously. But, hey, <laughs> fuck me. Uh, let us know what you thought about, like, you know, of course, I like, if you say anything other than Dervish's fucking American Sam Leskin gimmick wasn't the best part of this, I don't know. You, like, don't even bother telling me about your favorite part because that is the best part, all right? And I want to see more of American Sam in the future. I want to see, like, a spin-off. I want to see fucking everything. I fucking love American Sam. I think he's fucking hilarious. And, like, you know, I really hope to see him in any and all further adventures of uh, this here, like, you know, 2D and all that, uh, Shadowgun. But uh, the only way to do that is to, like, you know, click that wee notification bell. So, like, you know, like, if you click that wee notification bell, I'm like, you know, why have you not clicked it by the stage? I mean, we're, like, what, we're like, eight in? We're fucking eight in here. Why are you watching it eight in? You're not even subscribed? I mean, sort that out. Hit subscribe. Don't worry, like, you know, you trust me. You know what I mean? At this point, I'd like to think that you trust me. So, like, you know, definitely click that notification bell and check it and you know, for the next time below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did because I thought it was fucking hilarious. And I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This is... This is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this?